Nancy Cordoba grew up in Monte Quemado, a small town in rural Argentina. Her childhood ended when she was only 11 years old because she had to start working as a maid to help her family make ends meet. She had to leave school. Leaving school pretty much meant giving up any chance of breaking out of a cycle of poverty. But instead, her family was referred to Haciendo Camino, an NGO that has been working for more than a decade to improve the quality of life for children in this impoverished area. Nancy learned sewing and handicrafts. Today, she is a key part of the center's team and teaches mothers how to print fabrics, use sewing machines, and make things for their children. Nancy and Haciendo Camino have experienced the strength that only an organized community can give. Or, in this specific case, the power of a safety net. I'm Jennifer Clark. I am a journalist and I've always been passionate about great stories. This is a story that is 190 years old. It is the story of Generali and how it has always been a life partner for its clients, for global communities, and for those who are in need, with a spirit of constant innovation and sustainability. It's a story that comes a long way into the future. This is 190 Years of Future, Episode 1, The Power of a Safety Net. No circus would ever operate without a safety net to catch the trapeze artist if they fall. The safety net gives artists the confidence they need to perform. It gives them speed. And it gives them the freedom to do the flying leaps that take our breath away. Nancy Cordoba was lucky because she found a safety net when she walked into Hacienda Camino's Monte Quemada Center, one of 12 located across northern Argentina. We spoke to Mariana Parola, a young woman from Buenos Aires who runs Haciendo Camino, one of over 50 NGOs that are part of Generali's foundation, the Human Safety Net. I believe the, the power of the net is the support and the exponential potential we get by belonging to it. Also, it gives us a sense of community and with that, a sense of meaning by being part of something that is larger than us. And I believe that being a part of a net gives us the courage to pursue hard challenges, especially in such difficult times. Generali built the human safety net from the ground up, starting in 2017 by tapping into the deep knowledge of its network of insurance agencies and local companies operating in 50 countries. And When I say by the ground up, I mean almost literally, because the ideas come from Generali's employees working around the world. Most large organizations manage their corporate social engagement in a top-down way, but Generali chose a different route when it started looking at how to maximize its efforts in the community space by setting up the Human Safety Net five years ago. Emma Ursic is the executive officer of the Human Safety Net. She explained to me how Generali built its net. We have 77,000 employees all over the world and um, we ask them, we ask them, what are the needs in your communities? What do you think generally, where do you think generally could be uh, most helpful? And uh, of course, then, you know, when you ask so many people, you get, uh, you get many ideas. We got uh, 500 proposals at the time. And then the difficult job was to you know, give it a meaning and try to find a common ground between so many different countries and different communities and what could be a common thread that would unite us in this net. And we finally landed with what the Human Safety Net has been working on in the past three years, uh, which is on the one hand, supporting vulnerable families with uh, small children 06. And the other area is um, supporting refugees in their host countries in Europe to start their new lives here and promoting integration through work.
More specifically, the Human Safety Net brings together the power of Generale's worldwide staff and agents working with local, non-governmental organizations in countries across Europe, Asia, and South America. So what does it do? Well, as Emma said, after they got feedback from the 500 proposals, it picked three main areas to focus on, working with parents of young children, working with premature newborns, and working to support startups created by refugees. Its Families Program, for example, helps parents in vulnerable circumstances by investing in parenting courses and centers. Over 3 to 12 months, parents learn how they can nurture their children's development every day. They become more confident and cope better with emotions and stress. The Refugee Startup Program, on the other hand, works side-by-side with refugees to make their business ideas into reality over a period of 6 to 12 months. And the Newborn Babies Program is the most recent. It works with hospitals, researchers, healthcare providers, and communities of parents to raise awareness about prematurity and newborn asphyxia, ensure adequate treatments, and to strengthen parenting support for those most vulnerable families. So how does all this get built? Well, what happens is that Generali offices decide that they want to participate in the Human Safety Network, choose which program they want to join, and then they're coached by the foundation staff on how to set it up and how to find the right NGO partner to deliver social impact. After that, they work closely with the NGO partner to set up the local program, and then they help monitor the results, figure out what works and what doesn't, what needs to be improved, and how to amplify the impact as the partnership moves forward. But let's go back to Mariana and see the end result of what happens on the ground by picking up where we left off. Well, Asino Camino, it's an NGO that specializes in treatment of child malnutrition and empowerment of women and families living in underserved communities that present a lot of high indicators of child malnutrition and also are uh, very isolated communities. Rural poverty in Argentina is a serious problem for families and children like Nancy Cordoba. In 2020, over half of families lived in overcrowded conditions and six out of 10 families did not have access to medical care. This is the context where Mariana works. We support especially critically critically families. We support them with home visits and help in order to navigate the public system. There's a big need not only to address the immediate uh, issues, but also to try to make connections and build bridges to for people to get access to, to their, their basic rights. Helping people reach their potential goes beyond providing financing. The idea behind the human safety net is for Generali to be a partner that provides competence, skills transfer, employee volunteering, and management expertise that grows out of its 190 years of experience in the insurance business to support NGOs in delivering their services to the community. Actually, if you think about it, insurance itself is a safety net because it protects people from risk. But what makes the human safety net innovative in venture philanthropy is the way it extends its reach of the safety net that is already provided by Generali's operations and how it mobilizes Generali's skills and people in supporting the NGOs it is working with. The grants are just the starting point. It helps the NGO partners expand their activities, pool resources, and build partnerships to positively impact more families with young children and refugees. In fact, from the very beginning, the approach was to combine two aspects. One, taking a more strategic approach by looking at the medium term, which is a view that, by the way, is typical within the insurance sector, and by building a measurement system that could be used to help partners improve the programs that they run with Generali. The other aspect was to activate the involvement of people in the company who want to contribute, starting with employees and agents but also even reaching out to customers. So the Human Safety Nets programs are supported by a volunteering platform within Generali, which allows NGO partners to tap the resources of people at the company who want to give back. Volunteering activities can either be skilled, 
like providing, say, financial communications or IT advice to NGOs, or non-skilled, like, let's say, healthy cooking, reading moments, or learning through play. So far, thousands of Generali employees and agents have dedicated more than 30,000 hours volunteering for the human safety net. From the very beginning, we thought of the human safety net as an opportunity to deploy different tools that we could make available as a large private organization. So, of course, it would be funds, but it would also be the competence and the time of our people and also our advocacy, the channels that we have, and the know-how, the the technical know-how that we can also bring to the table. And so the idea has been that we would work together with our partners and have an open dialogue to figure out how best to do this based on the needs. And I think what we see today is that we have granting, which is an important part, of course, of what we do every day. And on the other hand, we are seeing that there are other tools that we can deploy to kind of uh, augment the impact of what we do. For example, uh, one area that has been developed uh, in the course of 2020 is that of social impact investing meaning that we're looking at funds that measure the impact that they have on on the target um, that the fund addresses. Mariana Parola's personal story shows how skills can be transferred from the corporate world to the world of NGOs. Having an impact on the ground was the reason why Mariana decided to leave a career in marketing at large multinationals to work at an NGO. I decided to change from the corporate world to an NGO because uh, I started to feel that there were other challenging social problems that I really wanted to address. I feel that I had all this background, all the um, studies and all this experience, and I felt that it was a very unique opportunity to bring those gifts and those talents to the NGO because I felt that it it was going to be more impactful there. And and on a personal level, it was about trying to solve different kind of, of issues and and such deep and profound issues we have in this country. The idea is that the net is also open to collaboration and to partnership with other organizations, other foundations, and also the public sector. This sort of open information sharing has been accelerated by the COVID emergency. When the pandemic hit, the Human Safety Net decided to develop a new digital strategy to make sure that the programs could continue even remotely during the emergency, and then in the future too. So it started by asking for help from colleagues at Generali who are experts on digital technology and on content marketing, who, for example, gave, say, webinars and and engaged with partner organizations to see how best to deploy some of these tools. And then in another example, the Human Safety Net is mentoring Mariana Parola to scale up Haciendo Camino and share its model with similar organizations in Argentina. Here is Mariana explaining how. In 2020, we participated in a scale-up impact grant offered by the Human Safety Net, and we were awarded with this grant, which is support in terms of financial resources, but also in terms of consulting and mentoring uh, support. The idea is to be able to leverage resources from other organizations and even from the government for them to adopt and replicate our model. Let's go back to Italy, where the safety net we've been talking about has its anchor. The Human Safety Net Foundation is moving into the future with a new home in Venice, in a historic building called Procuratie Vecchie on St. Mark's Square, being restored and revitalized by Generali. As a company, Generali has a long relationship with Venice. This building is where Generali opened its first office back in 1832, just one year after the insurer was founded. When it opens next year, the building will become open to the public for the first time in its 500-year history. Venetians and tourists will be able to drop in and visit the Human Safety Net to find out more about what it does, experience directly, and learn how they can get involved. Well, Venice is is a special city for, for everybody, and I think it really embodies 
the topic of sustainability because it's so amazing and it's so fragile at the same time. And Generali has been in Venice since six months after its foundation. It was founded in Trieste, not far from Venice in 1831. So we've been there since the very beginning, uh, building one room at a time until now Generali is owning the whole wing. And the Procuratia Vecchia for me is 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 an incredible place. It's it's sacred, it's history, you're walking through history. And it's a building that in the past decades was not used very much or had lost uh, lost some of its its life for different reasons. And now with this new uh, project and restoration by British architect David Chipperfield, it has a new life, a new opportunity. And I think we are very fortunate to to be able with Generali now to make this the home of the human safety net. And so in a way we have a symbol, we have a window on the world for all that we are doing in all the countries on the ground in terms of social impact in a city that is an amazing symbol of sustainability. Of course, Venice was a cosmopolitan and international capital city at one time, and it still is a magnet drawing people from around the world. So it makes sense that the safety net we are talking about would be anchored in Venice and then spread around the world. For example, the net reaches across Europe to the millions of refugees that have traveled here, escaping war and persecution in their home countries. Many of these people are skilled and they have the potential to earn a livelihood in their new countries by setting up their own businesses. In fact, statistics show that in France and Germany, the likelihood of a non-EU-born citizen to be self-employed is two or three times higher than for native-borns. But of course, it's not easy to set up your own business, especially if you're foreign. The aspiring entrepreneurs get the support they need to develop concrete business plans, register their ventures, serve their first customers, and access seed capital. Sometimes the support comes from Genitali volunteers, employees that share their knowledge and become language coaches or legal experts. Beslan Karbatai from Syria is one of the entrepreneurs that receives support from the Human Safety Net. Bezlan was running his own food business, producing traditional cheeses when the Civil War broke out. The war meant Bezlan could not buy milk or gas to heat the milk, and so sooner or later he gave up the cheese factory and worked for three more years in Syria. But then he went to Germany where he settled in 2015. His start in Berlin, it wasn't easy. But then he got connected with Start Up Your Future and the Human Safety Net. And he was able to set up his own cheese dairy company called Freude UG in Berlin in 2018. Beslin now produces new cheeses for the German market and homeland Syrian cheeses for migrants to Berlin. So as a consequence of the program, hundreds of refugees have started their company or have found a job in their host countries. The Human Safety Net organizes group training events with refugees, one-on-one -on -one coaching meetings, individual mentoring sessions, and employability workshops. So those of them who have an idea of a past, or a past experience in, in having their own small business, how do we help them get there in the, new, in the new circumstances? And of course, this is not necessarily super high tech. It's also um, very kind of, um, kind of neighborhood businesses that are uh, very much a part of the kind of fabric in, in the local community. And we find this is a really interesting avenue also to promote, of course, integration. The Human Safety Net Foundation was started in 2017. Since then, it spent 100% of this budget, about half of which came from Generali business units and the rest from the foundation itself, on grants. Emma? What does it feel like for you to have set up this big project that is now up and running and getting results? Well, of course, I think we can all be proud, all the team, the core team working on this, the company, but also the colleagues who are uh, in our business units all around the world. This is a big common endeavor. I feel good that we are giving people a chance on the ground. People who haven't had a chance for different reasons do get that. And I think this is the best motivation for all of us. So, you know, I had 
some chances growing up and I worked hard for it, but I did have the chances. I know others don't and personally to know that this is possible um, gives me that motivation to, to really you know, keep on keep on working on this. And um, when we leave the people at the end of this uh, journey that we've had together, ideally the people are in a different and better situation from where we found them. Leaving people better off than when you found them is a way to talk about the impact of social programs like the Human Safety Net that Janet Ali chose to create as a way of leveraging its involvement in the social sphere, in the communities where it works. By concentrating all of its efforts into one organization through a peer-to-peer format, it can reach the goal of improving people's lives. Well, the Human Safety Net, uh, it's a network that we believe is built mainly through commitment and trust. Commitment is what keeps us focused on understanding the complex social issues and is what guides us to do our best to bring to the table the support and the solutions our communities need. And, and the trust, the trust is like the glue that holds us together and is built through communication and action. And we are striving every day to be more open, thoughtful, and to honor our commitments. And we believe that the Human Safety Net shares these values as well. Uh, we have this motto, everyone who comes to us should live at least a little bit better than they were before. And this is something we really take at heart and I'm, and I'm really proud of, of how we foster this way of thinking. We started out by using the example of how a circus uses a safety net to protect its performers when they fall and to give them confidence. These sort of safety nets are passive and simply catch people so they don't get injured. When I think about the human safety net, I picture a group of people linked together around the world, working actively to share resources, know-how, and information to improve people's lives. That difference is reactive, proactive, and is the human difference in the human safety net. You have been listening to 190 Years of Future, a podcast written by me, Jennifer Clark, and realized by Cora Media for Generali. Research by Antonella Sarecchia, editorial supervision by Sara Poma for Cora Media, recording and sound design by Frigo Studio. <laughs>